Welcome to the Mac Talks, everybody. I am your host, Scott Johnson, the fella on my right with a gigantic bottle of cylinder vodka in his hand is my co-host, Chase Good morning, Hutchison. guys. How you doing? Chase, tell everybody what our program is all about. If you are, and you don't have to be these things, you could be anything and like this show, but if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or community leader, the Mac Talks are the vehicle that brings you the stories that you need to hear. That is right. And say hello to our lovely producer. What? Wait, what is she again? She's our... C head of production, yeah, chief yeah. CPO, CPO, chief pot operator, chief Tory. pot operator. <laughs> All right, so Chase, why don't you go ahead? We got a great guest. Obviously, you see the uh, the cylinder vodka in front of you, so we know it's going to be a good episode. It's going to be a good episode, guys. So why don't you go ahead and do an uh, intro for our guest? A lot of great stuff to talk about today. Our guest today is Stelios Stavrianos. Stelios is the founder and CEO of Core Beverage Group, a group dedicated to bringing high quality and unique spirits to the market. Under the Core Bev Group, he created Cylinder Vodka. For those who believe vodka is undrinkable and not smooth, he created this. Uh, he began distilling in his parents' basement and now Cylinder is distributed to over 150 locations in CT and New York. I feel like all truly great businesses start in their parents' basement, right? Yeah, yep, Like it, have to. I, That's where the, all the magic happens, yep. is in your parents' basement. Anyway, Stelios, welcome to the podcast. How are you Thanks, doing? Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Great. How, doing how are excellent. you? Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's early, but uh, I've had a cup of coffee already on my second in this uh yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine most of your um, most of your business dealings are on the later half of the day, just because yeah. you're dealing with a lot of you know restaurant owners and things of that nature. Or sometimes I'm sometimes I'm in meetings until one, two. Yeah, a. yeah, because you got to work with their time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if someone says, "Hey, you know, stop by the restaurant at you know twelve, that's when it's downtime." Yeah, like, what am I going to say? Exactly, exactly. Well. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having um, me. You're the first type of guest we've had um, with inside of this industry, and we're super excited to dig in and kind of hear your story. Um, so tell us a little bit about what made you start Cylinder Vodka. So uh, I started bartending at 19. Okay. Uh, I begged my way into the bartending scene because obviously 19, a 19 year old bartender is kind of taboo. You know, yep. it wasn't legal uh, to drink. Yep. So I uh, begged my way into the bar scene and quickly realized that vodka wasn't very good. Um, yeah. After I was able to drink legally, yeah. you know, I had a favorite <laughs> rum, I had a favorite bourbon, I had a favorite, favorite everything, but vodka was, was missing something for me. And I knew very, very early on that uh, I wanted to start my own vodka brand. I was like, you know what, I'm going to take vodka and just make it better in That's every awesome. way imaginable. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, so that's kind of where it all kind of started from you came up with with the idea that you wanted to be able to make vodka smooth yeah yeah it started behind the bar it started with me just kind of tasting different vodkas and saying like why, why is this so undrinkable why does it taste like like gasoline yeah and um so you reverse yeah, engineered kind of you pretty tasted much. it and then you went back to be like why is this like this yeah yeah now have you had a background in, in that before or, or no you no, just kind of saw no. something that interests you and you just dove in I have no That's the entrepreneurial background. spirit, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's I have always no chemistry background. It's always like you you find a problem and then you're like I can either fix this problem or I can make the solution better than what it already is. You know what I mean? Like either either fix the problem or make it better. And that's what you did with this this vodka. So So um so tell us um you know what how long have you been actually have you, have you had cylinder vodka for? Did you did you have other companies that you tried, but then you ended up with this one, or this was your first shot at doing this? This is my first shot at doing this. Awesome. I started it in 20, 2012, 2013 as just a concept. Yep. Twenty twelve as a concept. Twenty thirteen, I started actually working on um, educating myself on the art of distilling and how that all works. Okay. Um, and then started uh, immediately branding. Right. Started coming up with names and yep. what what the bottle would look like and trying to source manufacturers and vendors. Do you have a chemistry background? I, no, no, that? no, none. No, okay. No chemistry background. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. No, whatsoever. No. That's so funny. I, I self-taught. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Distillation. Yeah. That's great. So I see that on the bottle that 5% of the proceeds directly benefit clean water initiatives around the world. So what in, what inspired you to, you know, make that a part of your brand? Whew, so I, I wouldn't call myself an environmentalist, but yeah. I mean, you know, the impact we're making um, on our earth is pretty devastating yeah and so from a long time ago i was very into like 
recycling and, and, you know, clean water initiatives and, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, and that's, that's one component that I thought was missing from all these alcohol brands. None were giving back. Yeah. And if they were, you know what, it wasn't, it wasn't in any set way. I mean, if you, if you have a, a manufacturer who's selling, you know, a million bottles a year, who's donating a thousand dollars to some charity and says, Oh, you know, we donate. That doesn't really count. Yeah. You know, so every single bottle that we sell, 5% goes directly back to cleaning the Long Island Sound. That's awesome. Which is massive. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. We cool. definitely want to support that and put that message out there. We're also planting 150 trees uh, next week in Stanford, Greenwich, and Darien. I like that. Um, yeah, and that's uh, really cool. I, I think like that it. makes the vodka taste a little. Yeah. Bit better, so, honestly, <laughs> well, actually, tell us. So, so tell us what separates your vodka from the other companies because I think that you know, based upon everything you're saying, you know, you really tasted, you know, all the different brands that were out there. You felt there was a need for this. So, tell us what's different about your vodka from the other brands that are out there. Well, so I formulated. I was testing out different formulations for probably maybe three years. Yeah, and. And the last sort of batch that I did um, in my in my then apartment, it could it converted from parent basement to my apartment. Um, I tasted it and I'm like, wow, yeah, this is this, this is, is the it. one. And so it's a number of factors. It's it's how we make it. It's the ingredients that goes into it. It's the uh, it's the filtration process. Filtration process is huge because we use a very unique and state of the art process that. Um, I mean, I don't know who else is using this specific process, but it pretty much cleans the vodka and makes it extremely drinkable. Yeah, that's great. And how are you How are you marketing this? So we're marketing it as, for, first of all, we're, we're heavily pushing the whole, you know, clean water initiative. Yeah. So yeah. for anyone who, who likes that, this is their vodka. Mm-hmm. Anyone who says, you know what, um, you know, we're, we're destroying our earth, this is the vodka for that because that's going to help. Um, aside from the 5% that we're giving back, we're doing so much other stuff and helping with um, global disasters. Last year, we donated to uh, four different uh, areas that were impacted by natural disasters around the world and yeah. um, and donated money to those organizations and, and sent them uh, bottled water. Yeah. So that's great. Stuff like that. That's that's part of our marketing yeah. initiative. Yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. Other than that, it's, it's a really good price point. So for anyone who's looking for a good quality vodka and doesn't want to spend... 30, 40, 50 bucks. This is their vodka. How much is it for the for a bottle? If you go to a Retail. store, it's going to be about 24, 25 bucks. Okay. Which and, is, and you have it in stores in New York and Connecticut yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in 150 locations. It could be 160. I mean, the number's growing every single day. Yeah, I yeah. can't keep, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. know how many it is today, but it's around no, that's 150. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that's pretty cool. Awesome. So, um, so where are you at now? So you started in, you started in, you know, your parents' basement, then you went to your apartment. So do you, you have a facility now? We do have a facility. Okay. Uh, we have two locations, one in Michigan, one in Connecticut. Yep. And we're also opening our first public tasting room. That's what I was going to say. November 1st. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Where Thank is that going to be? It's going to be at Sterling Farms Golf Course in Stanford. Nice. Yeah. We have a location in one of the one of the bars. Okay. In one of the buildings on the golf course. And it's going to be a, a dedicated cylinder vodka bar. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Pretty, pretty cool. So I know you'd mentioned before that you've got, you know, you've got sales reps out there and stuff, you know, pounding the pavement. Uh, How big is the company? How many people do you have? It's not too big. Yeah. Yeah. I would Um, imagine you don't really need it to be that big um, as far as, you know. So it's, it's growing. Um, We're trying to, we're trying to hire more people. Yep. But we also want to keep it small. We don't want to grow too fast. We don't want to grow too fast. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves, um, especially because, you know, business can be. It's cyclical, you know, it can be up and down. Um, so we're trying to keep a lean, tight ship. Right now we have about seven employees. Yep. Um, in the summer we hired four interns, trained the hell out of them. Yep. And hopefully we can do some more interns um, in the winter and then next summer as well. But it, about about seven people altogether. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Have you always kind of had like an entrepreneurial spirit always. to you? Always. Always. Even when you were Since younger? I was young. Yeah. Yes, always. What type of stuff did you do when you were younger that... Uh... Oh, man. I, I did everything. Yeah. Um, lemonade stands with my sister. Yeah. Outside her front it's the porch. the one we hear a lot of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was 15, I started an eBay store. Yep. And I would sell just everything that I had around my house that my parents didn't want <laughs> or I didn't want. And I made some, I made a killing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, garage sales, tag sales, all that stuff made a killing um, and got my first full-time job when I was 14. 
Nice. Uh, working for a, a relative's uh, Halloween store. Yeah, that's great, man. Mall. Yeah. Yeah. Usually when we have people in here, that's always the the story. I it's was always, always when they're when we're younger as entre. You know, we start to show that entrepreneurial spirit at such a young age. You know, you know? what? I just I always wanted to work. I always wanted to make money. Um, not that money was a driving factor, but like you know, when you're young and you want to buy something, and you know, your mom says, "Oh, you know, we can't afford it," or yeah, maybe for Christmas, and you want it that bad, you're like, you know, I'm just. I'll go make it myself. Yeah. Yep. That's usually how. The, that's usually how it starts. These damn Greeks, man. <laughs> they're so. They're so economical I, and, and entrepreneurial. It's amazing. One of my best friends. One of his uh, best friends, Perry. He's, is he's, a, uh, he's he's a Greek. Uh, does he own a he's my, No. His okay. name is Rhea. His name is oh. Perikilis Anastastakis. Yeah, I can't even like say his very name. Greek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, he's this Greek god of fantasy football. He's also my <laughs> fantasy uh, my fantasy partner. So although this year not so much there, buddy. But love you. So are your parents? Um, are they immigrants or did they, they grow up here too? My dad and my mom were both born in Greece and then migrated over. My dad when he was about 15, my mom when she was about 27, 28. What did they do for work? Here? Yeah. My dad, Hard my dad work first guaranteed. worked at a pizzeria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom worked at Lord & Taylor. Hard working, right? Selling shoes. Extremely hard working. Yeah. Yep. Insanely hard working. My dad worked multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. My, mom, my mom worked around the clock. Um, and that's also what, what drove me to working yeah. harder too, is cause like, I, you have that you know, foundation. Yeah. Plus you, you want to be able to and... help them when they get older, the way they helped you when you were younger, 100%, 100%. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're still it's all about. They're so they're, they're still working full-time jobs and I'm trying to get them retired as fast as possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there's something, so you had both things going for you. I mean, you had it in your DNA kind of the hardworking kind of immigrant mentality is what people are referring to it as now. But then you also have that, like, like the environment that you grew up in as well, pushed you to like, I got to make a dollar, you know, what I mean, I got to get out there and start my own thing and make money. So you had the perfect storm. And now this takes you where you, and I'm surprised this is your first true, um, like business venture that you did, you know, I'm, you said you did it at lemonade stands and stuff. But you know, usually, I mean, maybe the eBay store would kind of be I had that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. That that kind of counts, I, I guess. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I You're also, able to buy a car off of your parents' old shit. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing more <laughs> entrepreneurial. Than that. They don't even know where it's at. It's like, it's did your mom away. ever come home and like the rug was missing in the house? And she's like, <laughs> "Where is my rug? Where's I never, the microwave?" I never did that. I never did. Yeah. That. But one time, I broke one of her. Uh, she had these two really beautiful olive pours, olive oil pours. Yeah. And I broke one of them. Yeah. And I was like, I bet you I could find that on eBay. And you did. I found yeah. the same exact just one replaced on eBay. It. Which yeah. Just one, yeah. That's funny. It was the only one on eBay, and I was like, yes. That's awesome. eBay, love it. So I have a great question for you here. Um, how do you do vodka tasting? Is it is it similar to wine, or do you have to actually, I mean, you have to actually, you know, swallow it. You don't spit it out, right? Like, You swallow it. Yeah. I mean, look. For, but then you end wine. up getting shit-faced? Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. how many times do you have to be like, okay, that's enough tasting for today because maybe my... <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit off because I've tasted so much of it. You know what? I think for wine, it depends on like your your culture about it. Yeah. Like the way you were taught. When I do wine tastings, I drink it. Yeah. I know people who spit it out. Yeah. Whatever floats your boat. Um, I feel like you with have vod- to taste it to, to finish the finish, right? Like- yeah. Because I mean, even when you spit it out, you, you, you're you supposed to swirl it in your mouth and you're supposed to get it like everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so even when you spit it out, you still kind of swallow some. Yeah. 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 But the point is to get it all around, like just everywhere. So you, you know, your taste is in your mouth. It's not. Yeah. It's not down here. But yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, why, why put a big gulp of wine in your mouth and not swallow it? Yeah, that's like true. good wine, you know. Yeah. Um, with vodka, you're supposed to really only kind of sip on it. Okay. You're not supposed to do like a. You're not. I mean, you're not supposed to take like you a, know a, yeah, a two like ounce a shot and just be like yeah. You're supposed to just. Taste no, because then, because then, like. Just a little taste. Yeah, there. just yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I imagine, yeah, that must be tough. But uh, the so my next question was, um, so tell us what what it's like being in this industry. I'm really curious, like, what's the biggest challenge out there oh, man. for you being in this industry, trying to make this company blow up and get this bottle in every every liquor store? Every what's the I want to guess one. Is? I guarantee you, one of them is the fact that like so many celebrities get into this industry. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. in this alcohol George industry. Clooney. I mean, there so uh, especially vodka with the rappers and the you know P Diddy's got a vodka, right? Don't they all Fifty have, Cent so has, many a has vodka. vodka? Like, yep. But go ahead. That, that's my guess. Tell me. It is it, I? I think it is the hardest industry in the world. 
Yep. I think vodka is the hardest category in the industry. Um, and yeah, everyone's in it. Um, celebrities, musicians. Um, who is it? Ryan Reynolds has a Ryan gin. Reynolds, yep. Uh, P. Diddy has a vodka. 50 Cent has a vodka. Yep. Um, it's it's tough. It's tough because there are all these companies. You know, you have Diageo. You have Pernod Ricard. Billions and billions of dollars that they're pouring into this industry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just a regular guy. Yep. I self-funded. Um, wasn't a millionaire. You know, worked from the ground up to, to bring this out to the market. So I oftentimes encounter... You know, I'll walk into a bar or a liquor store, and they'll be like, "We're good," Just yeah, without even without even anything, anything. With nothing. Just, yeah. Hi, I'm still nope. <clears throat> we're good. See ya. Yeah, yeah. Or because we'll have they that have that that industry has that you know to where they're like, "Oh, our customers don't like." You almost have to have them know about it before you come in. Almost. You know, there's a like, liquor store in Fairfield. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm not gonna say which one it is. Okay. But they, I would say. Every single month, I guarantee you they get at least maybe 10 people walking in asking for the product. And they're like, the liquor store down the street has it. And they don't care. It's, that's and weird. And it's crazy. And yeah. they blow me off every time. And it, it, that's, that's the industry. Some people care and will carry your product. And uh, I mean, look at, look at Tito's. If you look at what liquor stores were doing with Tito's you know, a decade ago, yeah. the last liquor store in Connecticut to sell Tito's, to, to not want it, at some point had to have been like, you know what? It's been 10 years. Fine, I'll buy a bottle so my customers can sell it. Yeah. So, if, I mean, eventually they have to give in, but there's a lot of push on like no new products, no new vodkas. We have a million vodkas. So it's tough. It's tough to stand out. Yeah, it's tough out. to break into the industry. But the the one good part that you have is that you just need a small slice of that market. Like That's they so need true. a bigger slice because they've got all the funding. They have so much. Like the slice that you need is very small. And once you can carve that slice in, which you, you're, you're already doing, and the more you can just push that a little bit more and a little bit more that's when it'll turn you that know what i mean so which you know that's when is... you can branch out too like i'm i'm sure i'm sure that you're thinking about you know the future maybe making different i mean you're a beverage company so you know you got to be thinking about making different beverages too we are working on a few right now actually awesome yep nice well we'll be your uh We'll come down, maybe I'll we'll do a separate tests. episode where we do like a little taste test or something like that. We'll come down and check That'd it out. That'd be awesome. You hopefully know? not this early. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely not this early. That's what I told not, him. When uh, I saw you come in with the two bottles, I'm like, if I would have known he's bringing two bottles, we would play this thing at three o'clock. <laughs> not, not in sober October, though. Yeah, yeah, not in sober, sober October. October. I've yeah. never heard that. Yeah. Never heard that? Uh, no. It started from a Joe Rogan podcast where him and his comedian friends decided they're going to do a challenge, go sober for the entire month of October. And then also they added in physical challenges as well. And it actually started, it inspired people across the U.S. to just like go sober for during October. Sober October. So now we're doing it. Um, um, I'm going to do it this this October. I've yet Are to fully it? commit yet. I think I'm committed. Um, I got to talk with my team a little more. <laughs> um, I got to... Gotta... <laughs> I'm, I'm going on the to, fence about it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take cylinder vodka and I'm gonna swish it around in my mouth and spit it out, <laughs> and that's not gonna count as drinking. It's just, I'm just taste testing. I wish I could do that. It's that'd be almost impossible for me. I did it in February after I came back from a from a sh very short trip to Europe. I two weeks no alcohol and it was insanely hard. Cause you'll walk into a bar and or, oh, it's or tough. a liquor store, well, especially hey, in your industry. I mean, I find it hard in our industry just because. When you go to meet somebody for business and stuff, you know, everybody usually, especially it if helps. you meet people in the evening, you know, you go to networking events, like it's, you know, but for you, I would imagine it even, even more to be that, you know, it's, it's so hard. You'll walk into a liquor store. I'll walk into a liquor store and someone will be like, Hey, we have this new bourbon. It's like, yeah. you know, aged a hundred years. People Try always want to give free. you stuff too. <laughs> That's the other yeah. thing that people want to give you stuff too, because like time. you're, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like. They're yeah. like, hey, it try must be this. It's impossible to not be an alcoholic. <laughs> like, it's really hard to not be an alcoholic. Well, it's that sipping. It's not the. It's no, just but you the, know what? A lot of times, I if I'm at an event. Yeah, you probably don't even get drunk. I, you, you probably don't even get drunk just because you just. Sometimes I don't even drink. Yeah. I'll ask for a You like, do the a, throw it over a club your soda. <laughs> club soda with Actually, the lime a in it. A few times, a few times I've, I've dropped alcohol down like on my feet. Yeah. And just went to. Cause like you gotta you gotta keep your yeah your you gotta keep, yeah and you know you, you have to keep uh, your wits about you especially if you're around other industry people you don't want to like be known as a person who gets totally trashed at yeah. that events and, yeah. you know yeah mm -hmm. you got to be on point you don't want to be a stiff either though yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want to find you your line you want to be fun you want to yeah, be cool yeah, yeah, yeah you got to so find your line yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a lubricant right I mean you're supposed to that's why I always found with alcohol is just like it it helps you get comfortable in social situations um, which could be a bane for a lot of people. But um, for the most part, it's a 
it could um, be very useful. Yeah, remember that event that we were at at the Metro Club? Uh, yeah. Metropolitan Club yeah. a couple months ago. Yeah. And uh, there was a gentleman that was walking around there that uh, yeah. he got oh. a little too loose. No, he was. It was yeah, bad. somebody had to carry him out. Yeah. I it mean, was, it was, was I was so embarrassed. Like I mean, it was the Metropolitan That's Club. Awful. Yeah, mm. I felt so bad for him. And I really felt bad for the person that brought him. It was really, who I knew. Um, too but anyway. bougie of an event to be doing that. Yeah, to be you doing that. You know what I mean? So like, it's, it's almost it's like there's charities there. Yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. And people will never forget him. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Um. So. Besides your vodka, what are some of your other vodkas that 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 you enjoy that you liked? Like, how would you rank them? Did you take like, where any did you, inspiration? Where do you think that? Where do you think like like how do you rank other vodkas besides like besides yours? Like, who do you think is the best? I know Cylinder right. is number one. All right, but. so so if I was if I was uh, stuck on an island with only one other vodka, yes, other than Cylinder, yeah, it would probably be Kettle. Okay. Yeah, kettle's good. Kettle's what I drink. That's what I usually cylinder. hear. Like I hear kettle. Peop, I hear kettle is way better than Grey Goose, but it's people are just used to people just like the you know. You know what? Everyone everyone has their brand. Whether yeah. it's because of the bottle or because of the flavor. I mean, you can't knock people for liking what they like. Yeah. Um, I do believe kettle is a better taste than a lot of other things on the market. Whether yep. it's a nicer bottle or whether you like the story more or whether you like the price point more, that's all up to. Tito's kind of cracks me up, like where they came from and their whole brand and how they just became this huge popular thing is just kind of funny, right? Like they came out of nowhere. Yeah. And there's also, you know, what's funny about the alcohol industry too is like there's certain drinks that you're like, I'm never having that again. Like it scars you for life. Like yeah. in college, there was this vodka called Pop Off. Oh, do you know Pop Off vodka? Bro, it's, yeah, it's like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Oh, it's, dude, it's we literally it's what they make that when you drink when you drink bottomless um, <laughs> when you drink bottomless drinks like uh, what are the what are the uh, what is it the Bloody Mary? Yeah, it's got that in it. Like that's what they do. That's why they can pour it bottomless. We've all been there that's though. The plastic you, bottle. You got a shopping cart. The plastic cart. bottle. You got a shopping cart. You're walking through the liquor store. You see the pop off. You got a party. There's like 200 people coming. You got. You just start got, loading those in there. You got oh, 20 like, bucks. It's $15. I, already, I already have a headache. Just I, have a headache. I, I have a I headache just thinking about. But I have it ingrained in my mind. I'm like I'm. I can't drink it anymore because yeah. it's just. It's. I don't so think bad. that you would after you got out of college. I don't think. You shout out to pop off. I mean. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to. Shout out to pop off. Shout out to shitty vodka. I would I'll never have vodka. again. No, but now this is going to be my vodka. I'm going to rep this now. I hope so. Yeah. This is going to be my vodka. So speaking of scars, the first thing I ever got drunk off of and vomited from was watermelon Smirnoff. Oh. I drank. You must hate watermelon in general it. now. No, no, I love watermelon. <laughs> okay. But just that like artificial watermelon flavor yeah. and smell, I cannot do it. Yeah. I just can't. I'll Especially when you get sick off of just it. Yeah. Up. Yep, yep. That's funny. I know it's so weird, but but ne but then you also have ones that you're just like, I'll, I'll only break out when it's a really nice t occasion. Like alcohol is so interesting that way because it's, it can be both, right? And then there's ones that you are just your go-to. You know what I mean? So that's why what Scott's saying is so true. You just need a slice. You just need to be that vodka that either pe that's their go-to or that's their special occasion vodka. Hopefully it's not their scar your scar you for life vodka. Yeah, because <laughs> that can Hopefully happen not. real quick. Hopefully yep. not. Yep. But um. But yeah, so tell us what you have. Um, tell us, tell us what you have coming up. Um, so I know you said you were coming out with a new brand. Uh, I know you said you're planting the trees. Tell us a little bit more about what's coming up um, to finish out 2019 and what's coming in 2020. All right, so 2019, we are finishing off the year. We are going to be distributed in Florida. Nobody knows this, by the way. Okay, this is not public. Nice, um, but I'm allowed to say it because yeah, 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 because you because you're the boss. I'm the boss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Toronto, Florida, nice. uh, lower lower Florida, um, California, Colorado, Wyoming, and either December or January we will also be sold in Greece. Awesome, oh, I like cool. it. That's, that's awesome. nice. That's great. You need to get Drake up there popping this, this <laughs> yeah, cylinder yeah, yeah. up in Toronto, up in the uh, what do they call that Jurassic uh, Park or what do they call uh, it that six. big area? This yeah. <laughs> the six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all right, so that's we're awesome. Got some some pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, that's great. We're not you... trying to grow too fast though. Yeah, you know, like we're we're trying to secure just we're trying to do what we did in Connecticut three years ago. Yep, and just like secure just a few locations, rinse and repeat, create a few fans, create a base, and then solely organically grow from that that area. Well, man, I I think it's awesome. Um, super excited that we met you. Uh, definitely looking to you know 
to continue to network with you, um, continue to see what you're going to be doing, and to definitely try some of this vodka a little bit later on. Yeah, a bit I, later I, on I, today. I would love it. I would love some uh, some feedback on on what you think. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we'll do a little video. We make some funny little that. videos. Hell yeah. We make that. some funny little videos that we'll show you after the yeah. show. <clears throat> but all right, cool. So right now is Chase's favorite part of the program. Go it's ahead, Go ahead Chase. Part. So. Tell them what. The tell them all about so the program. All right. Uh, so this part of the program is called Mac Move or Whack Move. Um, just to explain it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Actually, it's really we're going to present you with business topics or topics from the news, and you're either going to say that Mac Move, you agree with it, think it's awesome, or Whack Move. So there's your never. sign, Let's sir. Do it. There's your sign, sir. All right. Well, this you. one is Thank mine. You very much. All right, Tori. Okay. Topic number one. First topic is Inspire Brands, which owns Arby's, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Sonic is buying Jimmy John's, which will make it the fourth largest restaurant company in the U.S. Wow. Jimmy John's. What are they trying to do? They're trying to be like the Amazon of, uh, of the food there? First of all, those are all restaurants that I don't ever eat at i've never eaten at any of those any of those but i would eat at a jimmy john's <laughs> i, I heard think jimmy I john's is terrible really you did yeah i've heard that it's because they get because jersey mike's is the shit so yeah. like jimmy john's i've heard of <laughs> jersey mike's never heard of jimmy yeah. john's ever jimmy john's do they pre-slice their meat is that why it sucks like subway listen i don't know anything about them because uh, you know Theo I, I know says that zero about jersey them. mike's got them sweaty meats they yeah, put that they put yeah. that juice. They got in that the sweaty, meats. vinegary, it's good, salty though. meat. Bro, it's no, good. it's really good. Is it? Really good. It's Jersey style. It's Jersey style. Yeah, it's good. It's like Bon Jovi esque. You know, yeah. it's like. Um, I, I'm gonna go Mac Move because you know, good for them. They're wrapping it up in their you know inspire brands, huh? Wrapping it up in their. I should add that go ahead. Jimmy John's touts its ability to drop off sandwiches in five minutes. That can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go whack move just, on that one. Uh, I'm gonna change. change. I just did it in mid-flight. Right. Um, if you're gonna tell me that you're gonna make a sandwich and have it delivered in five minutes, that sounds insane. Yeah. No, it's got to be five minutes. Like after if they can order. do it. No, that's gross. Even if it's five minutes from when I ordered it at the location, that's yeah. gross. Yeah. So I mean, I was all for you know them wrapping up and just buying more companies, but but you know what? You're right. You made a good point in the beginning of this, and that's that. Um, we don't eat at any of these shitty places. <laughs> and the quality yeah. of the food is not so great. You will not catch me in an Arby's ever. No. Ever. No. Even in the Same. commercials for Arby's, like the commercials for Arby's that show the sandwiches look gross. Like the point in the commercials is where they look delicious. Yeah, they don't look good. So we were watching, you know, the jo the amazing New York football giants. I yeah. mean, the amazing football giants come back from the down 18 points. And uh, an Arby's commercial came on playoffs, and uh, and I'm and I'm looking at the pictures, and I'm like, and those so pictures delicious, look right? no, they look like shit. <laughs> they look like shit. Usually McDonald's, the pictures look delicious. You know, they do all those fake little tricks. Arby's, they look like shit on the commercial. Yeah, I can't imagine what they look like in person. I think the sandwiches always look good on the commercial, and then when you go to buy them, they're just like a yeah, that's usually disgusting. the case. Like I don't want to eat this. Yeah, that's usually the case. Not for Arby's, though, because they have to set the bar lower because they know their sandwich is going to look way worse. I'm going to invent a word right now. What is that? All right. So their slogan is, we got the meats yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And that is just straight up Neanderthalic. <laughs> that is, I don't even know that, that take me back to the prehistoric ages and, and give me an Arby's sandwich because that's the only place that that sandwich has in, in history is, is back in the, when dinosaurs roamed. Do you know that... Um, Disgusting. That the sandwich train Jimmy whack John's move, did 2.1 yeah, billion. Whack. You're going whack move. Whack move. 2.1 billion in sales in 2018. And we don't I even find have that one. so hard to believe. Where is there a Jimmy John's? Who's eating at an Arby's? Can we take a poll in the office and see how many people have eaten? At? I think zero people in this office have, have probably eaten. Can they all hear this? No. Right now. We should though. That's a good idea. I'm thinking that we should blare the podcast out into the office. And right. have, have, people like, have people yeah, like have people yeah be like hey come in there I gotta ask you a quick <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be cool yeah all right cool so Tori what do you got on that you got Mac move or whack move you got no sign though because we only got three whack move whack move whack why move. show why? it to the camera why is it a whack move because I don't eat at those you're hold, places you're holding Mac move Otherwise, whack move yeah, yeah, there you go yeah yeah <laughs> disgusting right same yeah. reasons we said yeah all right yep. give me my sign back all right all right topic number two. 
So the European Union's top court has ruled that Google does not have to apply the right to be forgotten globally, which allows members of the public to make a request to any organization verbally or in writing to demand data about them be deleted. So this is like any damaging Ooh. or like false information that is shared, they can have it deleted, but only in Europe. Wow. That's interesting. You know, it's funny. You get caught in a loop, though, because if you ask for your information to be... De- this dude, he was a national case because he asked for information about him to be deleted. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. that, 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 puts that, more, that puts information... That information... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that information yeah. became the story. And then you're like, dude... That blows my mind. Yeah, isn't that yeah. funny? Isn't that, that is hilarious. <laughs> the that right to so be funny. forgotten case is famous, and this dude just screwed himself over. It's hilarious. This is really tough because... Because um, <clears throat> what if you're that... What if you're the person who wants information deleted and you have like something awful online? And then what if you're on the other end and you're like, I want to find out some some dirt about yeah. this guy. We're trying to hire someone. But then like, also who's going to determine like whether your experience with that person or that situation was, I mean, and I get it. We're talking about real serious stuff. But like, let's say we had, uh, you know, a business transaction and it went really bad. Like there's two sides to every story. And I feel like, like that should be public. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's tough because if what somebody could be lying, like, and up. it's like, what are you going to do? In my mind, I feel like what's going to happen is there's going to become a separate, like, court. It's going to be known as, like, the internet court. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to where it's like, you have to plead your case to Google and to Google's get that. Google's going to be like yeah, the judge Google's gonna be with like, the gavel. All right. We found you to be telling the truth. Just <laughs> keep the story going. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's funny, though, because... This is something that we've heard a lot of throughout the years. People call us all the time and they're just like, and it's funny because whenever somebody, newsflash, when you get a digital, when you are talking to a digital marketer and you say, how do I get some stuff off? We are going to Google you within that phone call Mm -hmm. and we are going to look up the shit you did. Yeah. And we found some pretty crazy shit. Always. Which we're not going to get into because they're our clients, but just know (laughs) there's like, it's funny because people are always like, but that's not true. How can they just put that out there? Yeah. And it's like, well, you can't regulate the Google, but apparently they are regulating the Google. Do you think it's a good thing in or, Europe. or a bad thing though? That's really the question. Is, I like, think is it a good thing or a bad thing? too much sticky, like there's too much sticky area. So I'm, I'm gonna go whack. whack move. Yeah, whack move. because I think there's too much sticky area. All right. But although I do think it would make for good content, like I like the whole the story about the guy that you know yeah, yeah, yeah. made his case more yeah. popular because I'm going of that. with I'm going with whack move because how how do you regulate that yeah how do you protect the public from people who should be online and should be searchable like this guy murdered someone yeah I don't know how how do you protect yourself from that yeah no that's true yeah but um, I imagine stuff like that has to be pub like you can't get yeah that. but then how do you like where do you draw the line yeah I know you, no it's so sticky I'm gonna get peer pressured into saying whack move so. I was thinking about a, a counter argument, but I, I'm not going to do that. Here you go, Tori. What do you think? Whack move across the board. Wow. wow. Too much gray area. Swept. We need some, We need a sound effect when everybody does a whack move, and then when we need a sound effect when everybody does a whack move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. I think we're going to do that from now on. Okay. Or, or, or if everybody does, <laughs> if everybody does whack move, we hit that cylinder vodka. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that type of podcast. <laughs> what if you did like the SVU, like, Gavel, like yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get some shit. We're gonna get some shit. Um, all right. So, topic number three, Tori. Starship Technologies created a food delivery robot and will be partnering partnering with Postmates, and it's already been introduced on the streets in DC. It's like a cooler on wheels that pairs with an app on your phone to open. This thing is awesome. You should see this thing scooting through New York City. It's just crossing streets and just like watching out for people. I want to see a video of someone just kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's our video. There's videos the out there of people trying to pry it open. You can't get it open. You can't get it open. And that thing will shoot you. It'll tase you. No, I'm just kidding. I want <laughs> one of these for my house it. so I don't have to walk into the kitchen. Oh, please stop. It. <laughs> stop it. I'm laying um, in bed looking at my phone. I just want When I saw this. Um, robot to bring me a burrito. I think it's cool um, for the fact that you know, like delivery services and stuff, but it's gonna it's gonna take some money out of people's pockets. This is this is gonna be humans' pockets. Yes. This may be the first like this may be the first robot system that really penetrates the market, I think. Yeah. Because obviously the stop and shop thing, it doesn't I don't know. The self checkouts they don't seem to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not really robots. But yeah. Um, it's feasible. 
I could see it's feasible. I could see there being hundreds of these little bastards zipping around in New York City in the next couple of years. Just think about it. Mm. You know what I mean? Have you been yeah. to San Francisco? No, I haven't. Europe? They have these? Europe recently? No. All Europe right. So you've heard about these like scooters, electric scooters that you could just rent on your phone? And pick yeah. Them up. yeah. And people hate them. And they're everywhere. Because yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're everywhere. You'll just be walking in a sidewalk and there'll be like three of them just in your way. And you're like, why yeah, did yeah, someone yeah. just leave this? I don't think it's going to work. You don't think it's going to work? I don't think it's, it's going to too much it, clutter. I think it's a cool idea. I don't think it's practical. Yeah. I mean, what if what if they all what if everyone on the street orders a burrito? That's, yeah, yeah. I know. What is this thing just going to carry a million so, no, burritos? And- I got it. I got it. I got it. You use it as transportation as well. So you catch a ride with one of these things. You double oh. down. <laughs> now you got people on top of these little boxes. So things. smart. Yes. All right, Mac move. See it? I'm going Mac move. I don't, I don't even have to. Move. That's okay. I'm sorry. That, that's move. all right. That's all right. I want to see this thing ten years from now and and yeah. go back to this Everywhere, conversation like, and see where we're at. Yeah. Well, at that point, Elon's going to big do, dig those burrows. We might be on Mars at that point. I don't yeah, know. that's true. The way the Earth is going now, it's pretty pissed at us. It's going well, to start. I'll tell you what, up. though. Keep buying that cylinder vodka, and we'll we'll make clean it, that water. We'll make it go. better. We'll make it better. That's right. All right, Tori, what do you got? Whack move. Whack Not move. a big fan of robots. They're scary. All right. And Some people fair. are intimidated and by that's, robots. That's, and that's okay. Fair. That's, that's okay. Fair. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. <laughs> Uh, Rush right. everything we just said down the toilet. <laughs> Topic number four. So Amazon is building their own wireless earbuds to compete with the Apple AirPods. Um, it'll offer, offer Alexa on the go and fitness tracking. Question. Uh, will this work with an iPhone? That's a good question. Because if it doesn't work with an iPhone, I'm all about Mac move because I love the Android Apple battle and I'm team Android. Yeah, me too. All day every day. Yeah, but I get I'm it. Team Apple. I'm 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 on the opposite side of the spectrum. I get it. I get it. Most people they like Apple. Did you hear Amazon just copied Allbirds shoe? Do you know no. Allbirds? I I, I, I know yeah. I've yeah, I've heard of so them. So they sell pretty much it's 100% sustainable. It's a sneaker. It's beautiful. It's 95 bucks. Um so it's like environmentally sourced wool and just uh so they just stole somebody else's cycle. idea? Yeah, and then just selling it for yeah, that's what bucks. Amazon. That's what Amazon does. That's what Amazon does. That's what they're so doing I'm right going now. with yeah. Whack Move because yeah. Yeah. Amazon can't do everything because then nobody will have a job. Nobody, nobody is going to have a business. Oh, see, I'm imagine, so torn. Imagine Amazon Vodka. Yeah, I know. Right, 12 bucks delivered anywhere within an hour. Yeah. I think it would put, no. I think it would put, I think it would put Kirkland Vodka out of business. <laughs> it might. It might put every vodka out of business. It's true. It's true. So for that sense, I'm with you and I want to go whack move. Yeah. But I like the Android side of things, so I want to go Mac move. But it's not it's not an Android Apple thing. It's more or less an Amazon thing and they're trying to run the world and uh I'm going to go whack move on that. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'm not gonna lie though. Sometimes, uh, like when Apple comes out with something new that looks cool, I'm like the dude in that meme where he's walking with his girlfriend and he looks yeah. behind him. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like the dude in that meme, and then Apple's like that other company, and my girlfriend's Android, and I'm just like, mm, that looks pretty nice. <laughs> but I'll never switch over because I'm a faithful good purse. I mean, the camera thing is cool on the iPhone. Yeah, the now camera thing. The cool. three cameras. All right, oh, whack move. Uh, Amazon gimmick. needs to take a hike. Take a hike. Yeah, you're gonna ruin everything. I dude. mean, Jesus Christ! At least pay your employees a little yeah, bit better yeah. if you're gonna do yeah. this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you could probably pay all your employees double and still be the richest person in the world. We're so. all gonna be employed by Amazon in 20 years. So doesn't great, matter. great. <laughs> but then, but then, I mean, the, the market wouldn't really work very well because who would be buying their products? Yeah, it would be if everyone's getting paid like 12 bucks a mu- 12 Bezos bucks an hour. Would be like Hitler, basically. <laughs> Whoa! Sorry, that was a hot take. Whoa, that was a I hot went take. way too far. Is that gonna be? I is went that way be cut too far. Out? No, we're not cutting that shit okay. out. I stand you might make it on I the news. You might make it on the news with that. Stand behind <laughs> what I say. Local podcaster uh, no. compares Hitler to <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Bezos. <laughs> Believe me, it's been way worse. People have compared it to way worse, I'm sure. Okay. but All right, here, Tori, what are you, what are you calling on this one? I'm going Mac move just because of the fitness component um, and having Alexa on she the likes, go. Yeah, she cool. likes the accessories of it. Isn't yeah. that scary, yeah. though? Alexa, just in your ear, listening to every single thing you say. No, I don't. I'm not down with that Alexa shit. Yeah. Do you have one at your I house? Do, I do. Yeah. Do you have a record? I don't have one. I'm not down nope. with it. Nope. I'm not down with it either. Old man Johnson? Hell no! You are <laughs> not putting some shit in his house that's gonna that's gonna listen to him. I know my phone is, but 
you know, that's whatever. Yeah. What are you going to do? I know the technology is in the phone. It's, it's software built. But like anytime I go to Google something and I was just talking about it, and it's like the first thing that I know. pops up. Yep. I'm like, I know. I see, I, see cool. that same, I see that same thing. It makes me nervous. Makes They're going to remarket these ear pods to us after this podcast. The other, uh, what was it? A couple, what was it like a month or two ago? We were, uh, came home after a little happy hour session. Yeah. Went back to my house. A couple, Tommy. Who else was with us? Dro. Yeah. And we put on, uh, what was that? Like a uh, monster truck. Oh, yeah. yeah was, like, yeah. we're not in the monster truck. We, we just put it on We the just television. put on the TV and it was on ESPN. And like, I think monster truck shit was on. And we were just looking at it laughing. Dude, for a week and a half straight, the only thing that showed up in all of my shit was monster truck stuff. And I I'm never clicked truck. on anything. I never searched anything. <laughs> I, I didn't, like, they I didn't choose to me. be. I didn't choose to be Gravedigger. That's my. That's my. <laughs> Next thing you know, I got a grave digger tattoo. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is going on. It's getting just shit That's remarketed scary. out of me. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So, all right, what are we moving on to? Topic number five. Yeah. So to close it out, um, Emmy ratings have hit an all-time low for the second year in a row. Um, this is after they've uh, changed the show to no host, um, and a lot of backlash in the in the award community. What do you think? Um, so this is, uh, I got a problem with this topic. I got a couple problems why? with this talk, topic. Maybe we should talk about it afterwards though. But anyway, what, what are we calling the Mac move or whack move on? What is the question? Basically just, um, like award shows in general, like are, yeah, are, are they, they a are scam? They being, are they, are they, oh, okay. are they on their way out? Okay. Like I think they're, I think they're, oh, like, so times are changing. Just like Emmys. Yeah. Mac move or this whack is what move. it is. Ready? Times are changing, and they're not changing. They try to change with some half-ass shit, like taking the host off, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, what game are we playing here? Is it about, you know, like what? Why what's did the they deal? take the host off though? I don't is know. It, Why did it, they take the host off? It, they just want to try something. PC? After Kevin of... Hart had oh, like that, I don't agree with that. that. Everybody's agree offended with that. by everything. That's people, why there's no host. People need to stop being offended by yes, everything. Yes, hundred percent. But that's the reason why there's no host. Because right. no matter what you do, somebody's gonna offend somebody. Right. Right? I mean, who the hell else can you put up there? They gotta put yeah, up no there a, a black Chinese ginger uh, <laughs> transgender. <laughs> Uh, uh, paraplegic. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be the next host of the Emmys. I can't believe I just said that on there, but that's gonna be that's what the only acceptable host option. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm offended that the Emmys don't have a host. Yeah. I'm gonna go whack move because I think the Emmys are whack. I think that I think the Emmys represent, um, like the culture that we're in right now. You know what I mean? Like with, like everybody that's at those awards are super offended by everything. That's why they can't have a host, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the people of Hollywood and it's the, yeah, they're just, they're, they're the ones that are driving the shit. Yeah. Right? I love the drama, Mac move. Love the Emmys, love the drama. I'm not gonna lie, when Inside Edition is on TV and I get home and it's a late day and my brain is mush, like I just get drawn into the highlights and I'm like, oh, Jennifer Aniston said You're what? Sheep. Like, like, You're oh, sheeple. she wore that dress. Like, I, I get it. I get it. I like it. I'm sure, Tori, you love the Emmys, right? Yeah, I do. She loves the Emmys. No, but Tori. she likes the highlights of the Emmys, though. She doesn't like the actual show. Do you? No, no one does. She likes the outfits. You like yeah. the after effect of it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going Mac move. I think this is a sign for the Emmys to stop being so, like, square and rigid and just, like, chill a little bit. And yeah. I agree with you. Change up their, yeah. their mantra. I love the Emmys. I, I don't know why you. I love the Emmy. I don't know why I love that. Who was the host of the Grammys? Emmys. They didn't have a host. They Damn. were the first one. That was because really? of Kevin Hart. Yo, we're going to start doing this show with no host. <laughs> Seriously. Because especially what Chase just said. <laughs> we're going to be in some shit. Dude, listen. This is what it is, right? Anything that is a meme generator is good in my book. Yeah. If it generates memes, like, like, and I'm not talking about memes, like funny memes. I'm just talking about things that generate thoughts and opinions and culture are usually. And this cool. is why on Chase's bio on his Instagram, it says send memes. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. Things that generate anger or frustration, those sell. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's our culture right now. Is and it's like one thing is like ignite something. Some of these people are super offended by all the stuff, and some people are super upset. And then there's the people that create the funnies, right? Yeah, and people that create the funny memes about the topics and stuff. And then there's people like us that just laugh about it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're just in the we don't really give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Like category. 
So, all right, that is going to wrap up Mac Move or Whack Move for this program. Uh, what'd you think? Did you have a good time with it? Or I what? had a great time. It's yeah, good time, it's right? Good. Good, I think we could stuff. definitely do it with a little vodka in us. I think it would definitely be yeah. a little. I think, this, I think you should start. I think you should start the segment with a shot of vodka. Yeah, that would be a great idea. I, I, I want to so. do this. We should have done this at a bar. We have to start it later. We should have done this Listen, at a bar. Should this we just great, reshoot at a bar? This is a great. This I, is a great. This I. I I love the product. Yeah. I, I love his energy. I love everything that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do something else. Yeah, yeah. Definitely 100%. Okay. We're going to need to do something that is going to help. It's going to be good for both of us. We're going to do a cross promotion. Something that's good for the back talk. Something that's good for cylinder vodka. Um, I have an idea. What's that? All right. We pick a bar. Yeah. In Brookfield or somewhere. I just want to first, I want to let you know, though, that Chase, we got to keep him. He gets a few in him. He's it's true. I don't feel. I don't get drunk. He gets kicked like, out of places. I don't places. get. All right. Drunk. So we'll give. We'll give him drink tokens. <laughs> okay. We'll give him three. <laughs> yes. And all you, the bartenders you. will know. Like. Yeah. Yeah. That's give the me guy. the drink token. How many have you had? Ah, I never heard of that before. No, he's he's usually good. It's usually when he's out with his boys. Business wise, he's professional as can be. Yeah. It's when he goes out with his boys on Halloween. Okay. That yeah, he yeah, acts yeah. Like yeah. It's when I'm by asshole. myself and not in a professional environment. That yeah, just that's when he ridiculous. cuts. I think that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's because he's in the professional environment so much that that's why. He yeah, does you have that. to let loose once yeah. in a while. You have to just not care. And it's funny though when like it ends up being like one of my friends. It's like a restaurant owner that I know from the gym, and I say to him, "Yeah, you, my boy got thrown out." He's like, <laughs> <laughs> the blonde haired kid? I'm like, yeah. He's like, he was out of control. But, you know, just, um, I just, some people don't like great dancing. Some people don't like a lot I of great dancing. And he gets agree. out there, he does the worm, he does all I, that shit. I don't so. do that. All right, go ahead. What's your idea? All right, so we threw a party at, at a bar. Yes. Fundraiser. Money goes back to cleaning the Long Island Sound. Yep. And we do a little podcast episode. In the I'm background. down. Chef Plum. I'm down. Chef Plum, get him involved somehow. Yeah. He'll be cooking, we'll be drinking, eating food podcasting it'll be like the let's, time of let's our do lives. it let's chef uh, plum he sounds like a like a celebrity chef yeah he is he he's is. our boy yeah he's our boy he's our boy came on the podcast on the the pod. he has a he has a radio show he's a private chef in montauk um and he just oh, wow. does a ton of different stuff he uh he has a show called restaurant road trip okay um which is on facebook and um he's he's a, a chef and uh, he's, he's just, basically an entertainer. Yeah, is what he in is. CT, he's funny. yeah, in CT, he's like he's pr- he's, he's the pretty man. Well known, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. he's kind of a tastemaker. We'll bring him on in on it. Yeah, he's kind of a tastemaker. Oh, dude! Now you got my brain thinking. I know. Now I'm thinking all these ideas. All right, let's just get this. There's a lot uh, we can do. Thinking. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start a group chat. We're gonna start throwing some shit in there. We're gonna see what <laughs> we can do. All right. So, all right, cool. So this will conclude this episode of the Mac Talks. Chase is gonna go ahead and close us out is going to give uh, everybody's handle and uh, go from there. All right. So thanks for joining us, everybody. If you're looking to learn more about Cylinder Vodka, you can visit their website, www.cylindervodka.com. They have a neat little uh, location tool on there where you can find out where you can buy uh, Cylinder Vodka nearest to you. Awesome. Um, They're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Cylinder Vodka. Vodka, you could just search that on Facebook. Stelios, thanks so much for coming thank in, you guys. Man. Thank you it was so awesome. much. I hope thanks you have fun. fun. Yeah, um, I did. And uh, for all of our listeners, if you want to find out more about the Mac Talks, how to listen, watch, and subscribe, you can visit our website, www.themactalks.com. If you like our con- content, please leave us a review on iTunes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Also, follow us on Instagram at M-A-C-K Talks. All right. Thank you so much, Tori. Say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you.